Hello and welcome to Ms. Ma's Advanced Functions class. This is 3.2, the characteristics of polynomial functions. So if you remember, a polynomial function will be of this form, y equals a sub n x to the n plus so on and so forth until we get to a sub, a sub 0 or a naught. Um, and this is the constant. And the coefficient, the number in front of the largest x power is called the leading coefficient. It's a really important number. So it's called a sub n because it's in front of x to the n. So that's called the leading coefficient, and it's something that we're going to have to be looking at a lot in the future. Also, a turning point is where you have a local maximum or minimum. We talked about TPs before. And um, so here are some rules for you. An even degree polynomial will have at most n minus 1 turning points and at least one turning point. Okay, you have to have at least one turning point if it's an even polynomial. If it's an odd polynomial, it has at most n minus 1 turning points and at least zero turning points. It actually could have zero turning points. So the number of TPs for an even is 1, 2, n minus 1. And the number for an odd number of TPs for an odd is 0 to n minus 1. Okay, and I'm going to show you why in a second. So if you think about the n behavior of these two types of polynomials, we know that if we have a leading coefficient that is greater than 0, as in it is positive, that means that I'm going to have a function that is opening upwards. If you think about the quadratic, you know that if a is positive, then it opens upwards, so we get something like this. Or for the quartic, you could get a saggy bum like this, or a degree 6 polynomial looks like this, okay? So these are all positive, and they're opening upwards. So you can see that the end behavior is as follows. x approaches infinity, um, y approaches infinity, and as x approaches negative infinity, y approaches positive infinity as well. So these are the same. Um, if we have a negative leading coefficient, so it's less than 0, then it will open downwards, so the quadratic looks like that, or you could have a quartic that looks like this, opening downwards, or even, you know, a 6 degree polynomial that looks like something like that. Okay, so the end behavior for this is as x approaches infinity, y approaches negative infinity, and as x approaches negative infinity, y also approaches negative infinity. So you can see that the end behaviors for even are the same, okay? They are going to be going in the same direction both ways. And for an odd degree polynomial, it's going to be the opposite way, so they are going to be going far apart. If it's positive, then like x cubed, or even the line, the line starts like this and it goes like this, so it starts at the bottom and goes to the top. Um, the cubic looks very similar, where we start at the bottom and go to the top, and so does the quintic. Okay, so these are all positive, odd degree polynomials, and so the end behavior for this is as x approaches negative infinity, y approaches negative infinity, and as x approaches positive infinity, y approaches positive infinity. All right? If you look at the same odd degree and we have a negative leading coefficient, then we could have a line that's going downwards like this, a negative slope, where we might get a cubic function that looks like this, or even the quintic that looks like this, and you can see that the end behavior is as x approaches negative infinity, so it goes this way, y is approaching positive infinity, it's going up as x approaches positive infinity, y is approaching negative infinity. So for odd, they have opposite end behaviors. They're going in opposite directions. So this helps us with the number of turning points, because if you think about um, a, let's say, a degree 4 polynomial, so n equals 4, we know that we should have at least one turning point because if we want to go, if we start from up and we want to go back to up, we have to turn at least once to get there. And if I turn more than once, if I turn twice, let's say, then I know I'm going to have to turn back up again. So I actually need to have an odd number of TPs, an odd number of turning points in an even degree polynomial. And if you look at the 
odd degree polynomial, so let's say n equals 5, you know, if I'm starting this way and I keep going, I don't have to turn at all in order to go, uh, you know, off into infinity. But if I do turn once, oops, if I do turn once like this, I'm going to have to turn again at least another time, and if I turn, then I'm going to have to another another turn. So you can see I need uh, to have an even number of turning points. So an even number of turning points for an odd uh, degree polynomial. Okay? So, for example, n equals 5, that means I could have, um, it's possible to have I'm just going to write that up, possible to have zero turning points, I could have two turning points, or I could have four turning points. And that's the rule, because I can have at most n minus 1, but I do have to have an even number. Okay? We're going to use this information to graph this function, and we need very minimal amount of information to graph it. This negative 3 is the leading coefficient because we are in standard form you should just double check before you do it so a sub n is equal to negative 3 and we know that that is negative and that's what's important about the leading coefficient the degree is 5 you can see it's right here 5 and that is odd and that's what we need to know and then the last thing is that this is negative 5 here at the end the constant term is also the y-intercept, and that's something that you can remember. It's really easy to find. Um, and if you're not sure, you can put x equals 0 and solve, and you'll see that um, 0, negative 5 is on the graph. So the y-intercept is negative 5. I'll write that in. It also asks me the possible number of turning points, because this is an odd degree 5. I know that the number of turning points could be uh, it has to be at least, well, 0, and then it could be any even number up to n minus 1. n minus 1 is 4, so 0, 2, or 4. And the number of zeros, well, because it is an odd polynomial and it goes from top to bottom, it's going to go from top to bottom, so it has to go through the x-axis at least once. So I have at least one zero, and I could have up to five zeros, depending, so 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5. Okay, that's the number of zeros. I'm going to use that information to just draw a possible sketch. It's not necessarily accurate. And I'm just going to draw, well, it's got to start at the top and go, I'm just going to have one, two, three, four turning points, and I have actually one, two, three, four, five zeros in this case. And uh, I'm going to wait until to draw my x-axis in because, or sorry, y-axis in, because I know that I want the y-intercept to be negative 5, so I'm just going to try to draw it so that I get to negative 5 somewhere. It doesn't have to be through a turning point. Um, oh actually, I was trying to avoid that, and so this is f of x. Well, it's a very basic graph, okay? But it's got the correct end behaviors, and it's got 1, 2, 3, 4 turning points, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 zeros, and the correct y-intercept, so it's fine. Okay, so we're going to do it again. Describe the end behaviors of each function, possible number of turning points, and the possible number of zeros, so this is the same question. Use these characteristics to sketch possible graphs of the function. That's the same question that we just did. So why don't you pause the video and try to do this, and, um, and then come back when you're ready. Okay, so I'm going to assume that you tried it already and that you found the um, leading coefficient, the degree. You also found the number of TPs, the number of zeros, and the y-intercept. If you didn't do that, go back and do it right now. So give it a pause. All right, so if you did that, then you should get that the leading coefficient is 2. That's from here. The degree is 4. That's from here. The number of TPs then will have to be 1 or 3 because n minus 1 is 3 number of zeros. If you have an even um, degree then you know that you could be hovering above the graph. It could look like this, a saggy bum waiting to sit. So a number of zeros can be 0. Uh, it could be 1, 2, 3, or 4, up to 4 because the degree is 4. And the y-intercept is the last number here, 2, so it's 2. So again, I'm just going to draw my graph, and um, because I have an 
positive leading coefficient and an even degree, I know that I'm going to be opening upwards. So the um, end behavior will be as x approaches negative infinity, y approaches infinity. As x approaches positive infinity, y also approaches positive infinity. So it's going to look like that. I'm just going to draw it so that I get four, um, four turning points like that, or three turning points and four zeros. And I want my y-intercept to be two, so I'll go where it's positive. Um, well, I guess I'll use my purple here. And there you go. I'll just label that as a two. And this is the y, and this is the x. And this is one of the possibilities for this graph, and we can't do much better than this. So here's another type of example where we're not given um, the equation, but we are asked what the graph looks like given this polynomial range and turning points. So because it has this limitation on the range, I know that it has to be an even degree. And because it has three turning points, I know the degree has to be greater than or equal to four. I mean, even if the degree was 26, I could still have three turning points. But I know that if it, the degree is two, then I can only have at maximum n minus one, which is two minus one, one turning point. So it has to be greater than or equal to four, and it has to be even. And the last thing that I notice is that this is less than equal to. This less than equal to means that this is a maximum. And so that global maximum tells me that my um, graph is going to be pointing downwards. So it could look something like this, where I've got, um, I've got one, two, three turning points like this. And this, and I could just draw an axis in here. So that's my y and that's my x. And this is going to have to be 10 right here. So that's my global maximum. And so that's basically the best I can do with this graph. So in summary, we learned about the leading coefficient and whether it is positive or negative. Uh, we learned about the degree and whether it is odd or even, and how those things affect our shape and our end behavior, as well as finding out what the y-intercept is. Thanks for watching, and bring any questions you have to class.